see you there. Welcome to Coffee with a Kick. I got the gun. Hi, welcome back to Coffee with a Kick. Today, we're gonna to be talking about The Flying Guillotine. The Flying Guillotine is a kung fu movie from 1975. This movie is from the Shaw Brothers Studio, which if you don't know anything about Hong Kong and kung fu films, the Shaw Brothers basically made like most giant uh, kung fu action films in the mid to the late 20th century. And this is one of theirs. Uh, it's one of the lesser known kind of kung fu action movies, um, which is part of the reason why I wanted to talk about it. Essentially, the plot of the film is that there's this crazed emperor who doesn't really have a name, he's just kind of referred to as the emperor. He's drunk on power, and in an effort to kind of subdue his citizens, uh, he commissions this scientist to create a deadly weapon that would help to sort of assassinate the other bureaucrats that speak their mind to the emperor. And so this scientist comes up with the flying guillotine. Which, if you don't know what the flying guillotine is, it's this ancient weapon. It's believed to maybe have been an actual thing, maybe not. Whenever I Google it, sort of the most that comes up is mostly from this movie and sort of the subsequent sequels and spin-offs and rip-offs of this movie. So essentially what it is, is like a really deadly hat that you throw at somebody and it kind of like drops like a laundry basket, which then kind of pops your head off like a cherry. So the scientist creates this weapon and uh, it's supposed to be deadly and unstoppable. He trains up a force of 12 guys uh, and uses it to basically assassinate the enemies of the emperor. But not all is perfect in paradise, as one of these new assassins uh, starts to feel some guilt and remorse for his actions. So he takes up arms, he goes on the run, he finds new love, and he fights back against the flying guillotine. One of the things that I really like about this movie is that its plot is actually incredibly interesting. A lot of times in these kung fu movies, the plot tends to be somewhat flimsy because what you're there for is the action. So a lot of times the plot tends to just kind of be a device to get people from one place to another. But in this movie, there seems to be like actual motivation to the action. A lot of the scenes feel natural because of uh, what's driving them forward in the plot. And it just takes a really dark turn um, and actually has sort of consequences for the hero, it has consequences for the villain, and it's a really interesting narrative. I really like the way it sort of speaks to uh, fighting against power, to fighting against oppression, being one man railing against the system. There's really great themes in it of surveillance and sort of like the way that citizens are turned against each other. It's a really interesting plot, and I think that if you're going into it thinking that it's just gonna be action after action, it's not really that. But it is a really great movie with a really solid plot, and the acting is all great. Um, the dog is licking the tripod. Honey, I'm trying to film a video. One of the other things that I really love about this film is that it's absolute, absolutely, mm, I'm Sean Connery. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it's one of the most like breathtakingly beautiful kind of kung fu movies that I've ever seen. A lot of these Shaw Brothers movies were all filmed sort of on the same sets in this sort of giant movie making factory. And a lot of times you didn't get these really beautiful sort of exteriors, but this movie gives you a lot of those. And it really makes good use of sort of handheld camera movements combined with sort of slow motion and, and lockdown camera movements. And it's just a really solid kung fu action flick. And of course, the action is as good as always. The Flying Guillotine presents a lot of really interesting, sort of unique action sequences. It's quite gruesome, so if that's not really your thing, this is probably not the movie for you. <laughs> it's on Netflix right now, and I do recommend watching it on Netflix because I actually bought a DVD to be able to make this video, and oh my god, is it the worst DVD I've ever bought. <laughs> I don't know exactly how they got this copy of the movie, but it looks like it was like a VHS rip, um, and it's only in the English dub. There's no option to like turn it to the original language it was filmed in. I've done it. And now I'm ready. It's just, it's not a good, don't, don't, don't 
don't buy the DVD off Amazon. But thank you so much for watching. This has been Coffee with a Kick. If you like this video, go ahead and consider subscribing down below, maybe leaving a like, a nice comment, and tell me what movies you're watching uh, while you're stuck inside trying not to die. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go back to running for my life. We did boys as a video.